Thank you, makeup artist. Welcome back to Jimmy Kimmel Live from my house. My guest tonight is the only human being ever to hold the titles of Mr. Universe and Governor of California. He is beaming in now from his Casa La Vista. Please welcome Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hello, Governor. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? <laughs> you look doing really, all right. You it looks like really you have good. An, you've got an infestation there, it seems. I'm telling you, I have everything here. I have my well, you Lulu sure do. Here. I have my Lulu here. See that they love to eat here when I have lunch. And I just finished lunch, and now they are here, and they just like to participate a little bit with the lunch. I hope you don't mind. You got a donkey and a horse there, right? Yeah, on my right is whiskey, and then on my left, right here is is Lulu. <laughs> wow. Come on, Lulu. And how does it work? Are they free to roam the house? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they roam around the house. They go upstairs. They go downstairs. They are all over the place. They watch me when I work out and everything like that. I mean, it's really fantastic. And uh, they, they fight, of course, for the same food. I mean, here's whiskey. She just loves to have oatmeal cookies. So I have to have my... I have to, and my favorite thing, a favorite dessert is oatmeal cookies. And, of course, they take all my oatmeal cookies away. Right, Whiskey? Are these animals house trained? Well, you know, they are, yes, I mean, they're not trained, but they, they uh -huh. really very rarely go and take a dump in the house. Uh, <laughs> it happened one time. It happened one time in the kitchen while we were cooking, but that was okay. I mean, it just smelled a little bit from from uh, Wiener Schnitzel and from Pooh at the same time, but that's okay. It is about uh, wow. Come on. wow. <laughs> Your house has turned into the island of Dr. Moreau. That's exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> I thought this was interesting. I learned something about you, that when you were governor, you prepared the state for a situation like this by stockpiling. How many masks and, and ventilators and, and whatnot did you stockpile? Well, we stockpiled, you know, millions of masks and ventilators, thousands of ventilators. I think it was 2,400 ventilators and beds and stuff like that. And I think the whole idea was to be prepared for an earthquake or to be prepared for massive, for a lot of fires. Because one day I woke up when I was governor and we had 2,000, uh, 2012 fires in the state of California in one shot, in one day. And they were raging right. on from south to north. So I said to myself, we have to be prepared for this. And uh, don't bite my finger. Come on now. I have a little And years up. later, years later, the state was able to access those masks and, and ventilators. Well, yes. So, so uh, what would happen was, you know, it takes a certain amount of time and, and a certain amount of, of money to put this whole thing together. And you have to be very thoughtful and know exactly what you want to go and, and, and put together. So, but we did it. And then, then it took around $5 million to keep it up and to keep the storage and to keep it updated and everything. Excuse yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. I need a handkerchief. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, you, you need, you, need uh, you know, then the money to, to, to keep it in storage. And so there were budget crises. And so uh, there was governors that they, they decided that they didn't want to go and continue on paying because they decided that the money should go somewhere else. Because when oh. you're in a budget crisis and you have two twenty $20 billion deficit, you have to make tough decisions. And it's clear. And right. so they made that decision. And uh, But I think that some of the stuff was still in storage and they found it and they used it in the hospital. So it was really good. And I'm always a guy that likes to be prepared. So it doesn't matter if it is uh, with the budget or if it was with the levies. I was the first one to go out and to tell the state and our lawmakers that we need to upgrade our levies because we have 2,300 miles of levies in California. And so they, of course, didn't want to have anything to do with it. And then when Katrina happened in New Orleans and the levies broke, that's when they came back to me then and said, oh, I understand now that why we need levies. Have you been in touch with Governor Newsom? Do you collaborate? Do you work together? Does he can draw yes, from your uh, experience? Yes, uh, Governor Newsom and I, we have been friends for a long time. And, um, you know, he is, uh, he is doing a terrific job as governor here and uh, so, uh, the way he deals with the crisis. He was very smart in reaching out to the past governors like Governor Brown and Governor Davis, Governor Wilson, and myself, Democrats and Republicans, 
And the reason yes. why I'm mentioning that is uh, because I think it's very important that we don't make this um, a political kind of a situation. You know, right. so many times yeah. in politics, everyone is trying, the political parties are always trying to divide people. And uh, I am a uniter. I think it much more can get done when you unite people, when you bring them together. And uh, that's what Newsom is doing. You know, he reached out to Governor Wilson, who is a Republican. Me, I'm a Republican. And then also reached out to the Democrats, you know, to Brown and to Davis. And uh, so we are all working together and helping him to bring the economy back in, in, in California. And also with the budget crisis, because right. this is huge. I mean, I'm telling you, I cannot give you the numbers. He has the numbers, but I mean, they... Uh, huge numbers, I guarantee you. This is going to be a bigger budget deficit than we have ever had before, and not just in our state, but in other states. And so I think it needs a lot of brain power and a lot of different ways of thinking to bring the economy back. And so we are helping. But with me, it's all about how do we become part of the solution rather than part of the problem. So when people ask me all the time about, so, you know, how is Trump doing? What do you think about this? And I said, look, I think every, no one is waking up in the morning and say to themselves, I want to screw up. You know, everyone is going to wake up and say, you know, I want to do the best job possible. And so I think in general, governments have been slow in their reaction in the beginning. Democrats and Republicans have been slow in their reaction. And I think they will learn from this experience now. And uh, by the time this is over, we can go and uh, evaluate and see what mistakes were made and how do we make those mistakes never again. That is, I think, the important thing here. I think a great illustration of your, your bipartisan work is that you are a Republican who owns a donkey. I think that's something else. When we come back, we are with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Ed Norton. Edward Norton will join us, too. They'll tell us about what they're up to. Welcome back to Jimmy Kimmel Live from my house. I'm with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And joining us is Edward Norton, his friend. How do you guys know each other, Ed? We, um, we met at a wedding at a bar. Um, <laughs> I, you know, what it was, was I was looking, I was, a start, I was starting to train for American History X, and I asked, Ar Arnold said, you, you, he said, you know, you look good, you look, you look trim. And I said, well, I, I said, I'm, um, I'm actually trying to put on some size, so maybe you could give me some advice. And he asked me to break down my workout, so I was pretty proud. You know, I was slinging a lot of steel back then, and I was, I was, um, I told him my whole workout, and he goes, yeah, that's, a, that's pretty good, you're doing two a day. And I said, no, just, just once a day. And he goes, well, that's pretty f dead. <laughs> <laughs> and a bond was forged. <laughs> you guys have teamed up to launch the Frontline Responders Fund. Tell us about that and how we can get involved. Well, I, you know, I, got, I have two really dear friends. One of my really great pals from college, Dr. Howard Greller, is one of the senior ER doctors uh, at St. Barnabas in the Bronx. And... My friend, uh, Dr. Ali Wolf, is um, at Scripps in San Diego. They're both in the ER. They're, they're, um, I've been very, very anxious, you know, sitting at home and knowing that really good friends of mine are on a daily basis going into these incredibly intense frontline situations. I've been worried about their health. And we were all hearing about this critical short, shortage of gear to protect our, the doctors and the people who were finding the masks and buying the masks and buying the, the equipment, that was one thing. But in some cases, there were these enormous delays in getting the equipment from where they were finding it, like China especially. And so I, so I started working with this great organization, Flatport, that is basically procuring planes, big cargo planes uh, at a huge discount. And we built a fund to underwrite the cost of flying these big cargo flights for all of the hospitals and all the nonprofits and all the donors who are finding masks to try to uncork the delays. So, we, so we've been working on trying to get the delays down from a month or six weeks to like a couple of days in the turnaround on these orders. And um, Arnold, you know, launched this for us. He gave a million dollars right out of the gate uh, which which underwrote eight flights right off the bat, and and he helped me launch this fund, and over twenty thousand people have kicked in uh, almost seven and a half million bucks, and wow. um, flying these flights, we've moved we've moved almost eight and a half million uh, units of the pro protective gear um, for various people who are buying them, and uh, our goal is to get to ten million because. 
frankly, we've got requests from the people buying the masks and the hospitals to help them with, with more than double what we've done. So, you know, Arnold right. and I were talking about it. And, um, and, and one of the things he said really struck me was a lot of times uh, people get out, you know, people like us, we get out there, we say, hey, everybody pitch in. But a lot of times we don't go back to people and say, hey, this is working. It's, it's actually working. You know, t you know, a couple thousand people doing 20 bucks each that that moves about a million units of these masks. And and, and this is actually working. We're, we're, we're making this work. We're moving a lot of the gear very fast and and we really need more. So we did want to say to people it has made a difference and 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 we and don't stop. We, we can double down on this all together and, and keep making a difference. Well, the website to donate is on the screen, gofundme.com slash F slash Frontline Responders Fund. Uh, Ed, thank you for putting this together. Governor, thank you for being so generous and for having such forethought to get these masks uh, where they're needed to these hospitals. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. I think the key thing is always, you know, be part of the uh, solution rather than part of the problem. And this That's is where right. Ed and I why we connected right away because he's really always conscious about those things, no matter what the disaster is, and jumps in there and tries to find ways of helping. We want to work together on uh, all of those issues uh, because there's too many people out there that are sitting in front of the television and are complaining about the situation or things are too slow or there are not enough tests. And we always ask ourselves, you know, what do you do? What do you do about it? And so Ed and I, we just got out of our couch and said, we're going to do something about it. And I think this is what it's about. So it doesn't matter how much money you have. People like Ed said uh, have uh, sent in $20 and they have sent in a million dollars. And we have raised $7.2 million. And, uh, you know, now we're shooting for $10 million. So because now we're getting back into the selective surgeries in the various different hospitals all over California. And in order for them to do that successfully, they need gowns, they need masks. They need all the equipment, the protective equipment. So this is why it's important that we continue raising money and continue getting those gowns and those masks and this protective gear in. Until Arnold and I can do expendables for, um, you know, this <laughs> what we're doing together. All right.